computers or 20 TVs, sharing, <coughs> sharing resources, mutual aid. So uh, you can read a lot of big contradictions between uh, the digital movement and the eco movement. Um, how do you resolve the kinds of contradictions? How do we how do we deal with people like like a peer singer and and not you know uh, have some have a lot of questions you know being raised to to deal with it? And how do we deal with you know uh, you know uh, those who want to take apart civilization? Um, but also threaten the access of, 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 and, of, of many of those who need the access granted by civilization. A lot of my uh, disbelievers uh, uh, out of friends are, are against anar and, and anarchists because anarchists want to get rid of you know their means of access, and that's offensive to them. And so I, the, I just don't know how you would resolve these types of conversations. I would love to hear. Um, I think dialogue, education, and, and uh, uh, respecting. Uh, a respectful calling out, but not calling out where people have to like <coughs> get kicked out of conferences or get kicked out of movements or you know not get invited. I think the really difficult is when you bring these people together and have these heart to heart. You know that's what academia is about: is bringing people together. Um, because you know I might not agree with everything in a green anarchist anti civilization framework, but they had so much um, to offer the larger environmental justice, the larger environmental movement that critique of technology that nobody else did. But um, but that's why EcoAbility has to come right back and say, wait a second, right? Um, it's not that we take you know, it all or nothing. I think we have to take a little bit of everything, right? Like there's critiques of, there's a, there's a lot of critiques in, the, in like Peter Singer, but there's a lot of things I value as well. Um, but I also think that it's great that ADAPT and other radical disability organizations have protested and wanted him banned from Princeton University for his advocacy of um, wanting to, um, you know, uh, test on, on on youth and babies uh, for the larger, um, you know, good of, of society uh, because of his of his principles. You know, so um, if that, you know, you might not agree, um, but that that would be my thought. Is just like listening and, and, and learning from each other. Um, but at the same time, challenging and making people feel a little uncomfortable. I've, I've, you know, been called on a lot of my stuff, and I've been challenged a lot, and I feel fine with that because it makes me more humble as a person. I mean, I don't want to put them on, you know, but uh, we talked about it, you know, and, you know, as a student of a faculty member, I knew, and so it was going, to, but it's really hard. Um, you know, disability is the only identity at every school and university that you are not allowed to find out who has a disability. If you go to a multicultural center, you can say, oh, here's a multicultural center, and, you know, there's... Um, you know, there's the African American wing over here, and there's the Somali wing over here, and oh, you know, Peter is, you know, from Zimbabwe, so here's his email. And I've seen this, I've, you know, I've witnessed it, I've even participated in it, but, uh, but when I say, hey, do you know any kids with like, disabilities, or any faculty or staff with disabilities, I can't give that information out. Um, so there's this massive stigma, stigma on people with disabilities um, that needs to be, you know, challenged first. Um, and I do think he has disabilities, but it's society that has made him have disabilities, and that was like the real hard thing that, you know, and, and, and the conversation of disabilities and social justice is still pretty new, you know, it's very new in the animal rights environment. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I'm curious, um, this is about what you said about, like, the example you gave with Michael Vick. Do you think that he shouldn't have been criminalized at all, but what exactly do you think he should have been about that situation? Like, like, like. Um, I don't believe in the prison system. I, I mean, I believe in it. I know it exists. 
Um, it doesn't benefit anybody. Um, so I would not criminalize him. Um, he's already criminalized in society in my you know, theoretical way, uh, labeled, be stigmatized. Uh, but, uh, but I think what we could do is, like most people, right, uh, which I talk to you know, kids in the hip-hop community because I'm really involved in the hip-hop community, and I, you know, I talk to them about bullfighting and I'm like, I never thought about that. It's just like part of our culture, right? Like, not like we weren't born vegans. We weren't like we were. We were also born pretty horrible, torturing non-human animals in our indirect way too. We were eating animals, a lot of us in this room, and, and still are. And that's fine. Like I understand, we are learning and adapting, and then we go to college to learn more about feminism and trans, you know, gender issues and and, a lot, uh, and disability. And so, you know, I, you know, Syracuse University, where I got my PhD, they kicked two kids off for. Um, doing racist, you know, things, right? Um, it's a very punitive system. We have one of the best African-American uh, African studies programs in the country, um, where Angela Davis was um, uh, visiting for like three or four years, right? And so I was saying like, why wouldn't this like, you know, these students take classes from, you know, some of these brilliant individuals, right? And some of these faculty and students also agreed with that, right? Like. When I was in 12th grade, I never knew what like queer issues were. I, I was queer, but I didn't know what it was. And like somebody talked to me about queer trans issues. I didn't know like the difference between like, transgender and transsexual, right? Um, so I think that's that's what I would I would uh, advocate for is like education and not rehabilitation. That is to say that there's something wrong with him, right? Mentally or, or physically or cognitively, right? Um, when poor people steal, right? Um, like. TVs and things, there's nothing to be rehabilitated. They're brilliant. They're stealing to make money, and they're, they're getting food and rent to pay for food and shelter. That's, that's, that's logical, right? Um, they don't need to be rehabilitated, right? Like, um, to not do that it needs rehabilitation. Does that make I guess, I mean, Michael Vick didn't, didn't kill dogs out of necessity. So I think there's a huge disconnect between someone someone stealing for need, and someone someone fighting dogs out of I, whatever he got out of it. So I think that there is something inherently wrong with what he did, and that that should somehow be addressed by, in some manner, if not if not prison. And like, I guess I'm, like, I guess I'm, I guess I'm just asking, like, how, how would you address something like that? Malcolm X once said, and it's a great quote, Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today, right? And I think education, like this, have Mike Vick, you know, take seminars in animal advocacy, um, and, uh, you know, get involved in animal, you know, rights groups, talk, have them read some books, have them, you know, talk to some people, right? Um, these, these conversations are privileged conversations, um, and, and we're here privileged to have these conversations. And so, and I think, you know, um, locking somebody up because they did something wrong, um, because it's very dominant cultural. You know, dog fighting is a cultural um, entertainment practice, just like bullfighting. But that um, bullfighting is legal in certain countries, and so is bull riding. Um, and I don't see any difference between bull riding and, and dog fighting. But one's legal and one's not legal, and we have to understand what. Why is one not legal and one's one legal? It's really interesting because if we made a binary of the structure, all of the illegal cultural entertainment used by non-human animals would be, you know, communities and cultures that are represented by people of color, while the legal, you know, animal abuse uh, by non-human animals are those by the white community, you know. And we talk, like, go to Japan with the dolphins, um, you know, and I, you know, problematizing it and complicating it. So my point would be like, get my dick to go to Vassar, you know? Just to add to that, uh, there are like organizations that are doing this, like Bard from where we hail, um, is, has a Bard prison initiative, which is teaching in New York, maximum security prisons. Um, but it's like a super exclusive program because of resources and such. So it would be cool if this was happening more. <laughs> 